Nine years ago, Jamaican-born, London-raised rapper Cash was deported to Jamaica with nothing. Mama flew me out and that was a blessing. Then the government sent me back to the trenches. No housing, no contact, no idea how long it would take for him to return to the UK. But after challenging the deportation, Cash is now officially reinstated in the UK and is actually on a visit to Jamaica right now. But why was he deported in the first place? Cash is right now, right here on our stage, to answer. Sir Cash, sir, welcome. I'm very afraid. Good to have you, sir. Mm. Okay, so, so answer that question for, for us. Why were you deported? Well, you put technicalities, mm -hmm. however, on paper, it would say I overstayed. Your visa? Well, yes. But the reason why there's technicalities to it is I overstayed as a child. As so, a child? Yeah, so, te yes. so technically, I couldn't leave when my visa was running out because I was a child. Yes. You understand? That would have been to, for my parents to take care mm -hmm. of. But yeah. that wasn't taken care of. So I went primary school, secondary school, etc. So the whole time. So what age were you? I left Jamaica when I was around maybe six, seven. So really, I grew up in England. I know me a Jamaican. I know my born. I never have any difficulty identifying who I am. However, I was being raised somewhere else. <laughs> so eventually, you'll feel like that is what you know. That's all you know. So I end up knowing England more than I know Jamaica. OK. Yeah. So the deportation was found to be illegal? I mean, I guess so, because what they're saying is, even though you was a child when a business, mm -hmm. you come here to the country for a period of time, and that time passed, and you never returned to Jamaica. Yes. My argument is, I couldn't return, because that wasn't my responsibility as a six, five, six years old okay. child, you understand? And the moment I was old enough to fight the case, the moment I realized, because that's the next thing, we never actually realized we're in the country illegally. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know, you understand? It's only when opportunities came forward for me to fly and go different places. I mean, I go home and I say, yeah, man. I... <laughs> really? <laughs> so, yeah, like, in the early days, me to play football first. And uh, like, I was on trials for Chelsea and I was um, playing for London. Mm. And in London, another team, I guess, a match against Paris. So me go home now, things say, well, I got Paris, I got travel. And then that's when my first final was kind of like, yeah, you're not, yeah, you're not got a football match there because you can't really move. Whoa. Yeah, so from there, me I live in a complete different world in England now. Because mm. now I'm aware, you can't live the same after you, you, you become aware of the fact that you're illegally living somewhere. You understand? Now it makes sense why we can, as a family can do certain things. So were you caught and they, and they put you in detention and then sent I mean, you to Jamaica? I wouldn't How use did the, that I wouldn't, part I wouldn't, work? I wouldn't use the word caught. Yes, but you, you knew about it, your status, before you were... Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. How, how all of that blew up is because, because of my career, everybody know, everybody know me in the UK. Mm -hmm. So essentially what eventually happened was I get international bookings and I can't okay. take the shows. I got you, yeah. So because I can't take the shows, I say, then cool, I need to actually apply to be here properly within the country. So I put myself on their radar. They never need to catch me. It's me say, yo. Mm -hmm. Realize what I go on, what are the procedures in order for me to be here properly? Yes. And then you go do the right thing, and through you doing the right thing, end up get sent back to Jamaica. So you mounted the challenge? Yeah. Here, while here in Jamaica? No, this is while I'm in England. So when we leave as that six, seven years old, never, I've never, never returned to Jamaica. Yes. So at this point, when we get sent back at around 19, 20. At what point did you challenge? I was challenging from England, from England. and in Jamaica. Okay, so, so before them sent me and after them sent me. Oh, I said to me. So yeah. you, you mounted a case before you were sent. Of to course, Jamaica. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and you had to come anyway because they they were determined to I lost the, I lost oh really which resulted in a deportation well a removal which is slightly different to a deportation okay slightly different but yeah so you won an appeal is it you can you say, that. say that you can say okay. that yeah let's yeah. talk about your experience in Jamaica for those for those 5 years yeah. and all of the the challenges that that brought you yeah. no money no no housing nothing yeah what did you do God, <laughs> yeah, mm. God and a good support system yes. in the UK. And just me being vigilant. I'm just that way but, inclined. But, so yes. it's only a matter of time before me, I got adapt to wherever I am. You understand? Mm -hmm. Never did I reach a Jamaica and just be on some tourist business or feel sorry for myself and feel like, yo, I'm get sent out here. What am I going to do now? I have to find ways, you understand? Yes. I was born in a Kingston, I'm followed from Park Lane, Reddell's Road, mm -hmm. right? So, I already have certain things installing on me to be a survivor. Mm -hmm. And then remember, I've been surviving as an illegal immigrant in the UK for how much years. So, different situations, I can adapt to them. And that was yes. just one of my adapt. Yeah, basically. You adapt, adapt and survived Jamaica. I had to, I had to. OK. Can we talk the music now then? Yeah, anytime. anytime. So now that you're back in the UK, and did you pick up back your music right away? I never drop it. Never mm -hmm. ever drop it. When I'm there in Jamaica, enough people I watch the interview know, I got recognize me as someone they use, they, them see me in the streets out here, one million percent. Them see me, them see me tech bus, them see me load in a taxi park, them in a Ochi, Spanish, them see me. Them just never know the whole time. I was this musician, you understand? So okay. people see me now, it's a great feeling to return and, and basically reveal to the country what I've been doing this whole time. So oh, yeah. I was always releasing music during them five years, but my only I market them to England. Oh, really? Yeah. You were quietly doing your music? Yeah, 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 yeah. All by yourself? Well, yeah, basically, all by myself. Eventually, yeah. I started um, developing a team within Jamaica, and then eventually became like the bridge between anything that's happening in the UK industry that comes to Jamaica. So mm -hmm. there was a movie, The Intent 2, that ended up being filmed out here at some point. I played parts in that when the, the artists them from England are come to Jamaica and they want to either link other artists or shoot music videos or whatever mm -hmm. it is. I basically became the point of contact for accommodation, transportation, and just okay. organizing and making sure, say, as I said, they did the streets out here. So just making sure that. The artists, them, they're comfortable whenever they reach. And that was when you were actually learning the, the Jamaican street. Yeah. The yeah. real Jamaican street. Yeah, 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 yeah. But as a Jamaican living in the UK, you were close enough to the culture. Yeah, yeah. To understand it. Yeah. Though you left at seven. Yeah. How difficult was it to fit, to fit into, to fit back in? Very difficult because even though more was in tune with what the culture was, I guess the culture was like the theory. Mm -hmm. Be being sent here was the practical now. You can read all I book them when you want, but how to drive a car. It's yes. different to when you're in the actual car. So it, it, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy, but I did have to make, make it easy. Some culture, sh culture shock? Immediate con culture shock. The, the moment I walk out of the, 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 the airport, <laughs> I'm here. Immediate. So, I never get no, no time for doing a bill up no. straight away. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Normally, right, when you go, uh, there's this romantic uh, notion of what Jamaica is. With some of our nationals living overseas, especially yeah. when they left here young, mm. and they have this, this kind of unreal um, perception of Jamaica. Yeah, no, I see the real Jamaica. Right? And, and so you, <laughs> you had that experience. How did you feel about Jamaica before coming? All right, man, tell you what I to feel about Jamaica before. Yeah. I felt like Jamaica was this third world country, underdeveloped, mm -hmm. be a dirt road, donkey and them sitting there. <laughs> so me reach- Stuck I, in the past. Yeah, <laughs> that's because remember, I left young. So me, what me I imagine, mm -hmm. you understand? When I realized that Jamaica built up to where it built up, so the first culture shock immediately was just the fact that the road was just like England Road. That, it sounds small, but that was the straight away. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. I just know I'm on the road. You understand? That was the first thing. So loads of different things made me realize that, yeah, Jamaica developing out in a, in a way where 
a lot of people overseas are not aware of until yeah. they actually get out here. Right. Aren't we more, in your, from your perspective, more Americanized than, than British? Not necessarily. Okay. Because remember, this place was colonized. Yes, by, 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 the, by the So Brits. the first thing is, if I drive to England, I can't drive to Jamaica. Same side, of, whereas America is different side uh, of the... I was, you I, was I was talking more about our behavior in Jamaica. Yeah, no, nah, I, I, would, I wouldn't say that because America, America, America and even England is kind of like a melting pot for all of the different places. Mm -hmm. So you're going to find American characteristics within London somewhere. Yes. So no, course, not yeah. really strange. So even reach out here, football culture, people, the teams where people support, it's still tied into London. Me yes. wouldn't even know no, what no, American no. culture the, fully is. The legacy, the, the legacy, the colonial is here. legacy is there, <laughs> right? for it's sure. Here. But I'm just talking about the, the behavior of especially our young people yeah. um, who tend to be more Americanized because of the, the, what me do you mean the American that, media. Yeah. The American media is very strong in Jamaica. Yeah. We know more maybe about some of the American <laughs> culture than the Americans yeah, themselves yeah. Yeah, yeah. here in Jamaica because of the, con the high co rate of consumption mm. of their media in particular. Yeah. Um, being on this side of the Atlantic, we're consuming everything that's happening in America. Yeah, in yeah. the US, it's almost as if we're a state. Yeah, basically a state. Everything that's yeah, going yeah, on yeah. in there, in, in, for example, the hip hop culture, yeah. Hollywood and so on, we're on to it. Yeah. And we assume, too, that you guys know all of this until I'm talking to Brits who don't know yeah. about a lot of things that's happening on this side of the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the American culture is spilling over on us, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a drone. You know what I mean? In fact, it's a drone we right now. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So talk about the music now and tell us why rapping and not reggae and dance on. I think when it starts out again, mm -hmm. linking it back to the, the Americanized, if we, if we talk about hip hop music and just rapping in general, you automatically think America. Yes. So I'd say why I rapped is because one of my older brother them, they live in America mm -hmm. and him rap. Okay. So just wanting to be like your older brother, but just to end up rap. But because him did live in America, him rapping an American accent. Mm -hmm. So when we first start rapping, I rap in an American accent. Mm -hmm. You understand? And I guess in England, you have this. You have different waves of the yard man them. Mm -hmm. In that early stage, them fear the yard man them in England because the early, the early set of yard man them will come out of England, terrorize the place. But then as time goes on, you then know of the, the yard man them were just in at a dance and a be a dance moves them though, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. So as time's going on, me, I grew up in the streets really as a, as a, as a British youth. Yes. So I depend on the dancing thing in I dance. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, it's not that I was shying away from a culture. Every day I listen to all I dance all artists, them, the legends, them. You understand? Every day. But I never see myself doing music like them. Because on my day to day, I'm speaking like this. Yes. So when I write, naturally, it, nah, you understand? Yes. But now, now, after the five years in a Jamaica, I'm going to do everything. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Jamaica did that for me. That was one of the biggest gifts I could I get. Oh, yeah. So that's, no more do dance, no more behave, sing. That's one of the benefits of deportation. One I, one I had big benefit there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Though? Yeah, straight. Oh, yeah. It reconnects you with your roots. Of course, of course, in ways that you can't pay for. Because ah. it's, it's different, it's different to, 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 to be in Jamaica upon holiday or vacation. Mm -hmm. So it is living out here. It's a different reality. You understand? Like a complete different reality. So I'm grateful that. I experienced certain things in the wake. I've made it return to, for example, like, now me I come back to uh, Jamaica. Jamaica look for me like this big UK rapper. For example, right now, them not expect me for going to a taxi park and wait for the taxi, load, the bus load. Or, you understand? Me end up get for seat with no one having a clue okay. who I am. Yeah. If I depend on a bus, and at 20 or 17 people upon the bus, I can think of 20 yeah. or 17 different song concepts based upon just facial expressions. You understand? I get to actually be amongst that's the people. That's the best way to learn. Yeah, enough friend. artists yes. can't talk like that. They can't go in and amongst the people. And that's, I feel like you progress as a writer the closer you are to the people. That's why you have people, once they reach a level of success, they can no longer relate to the people because they're talking for their new reality. They're not yeah. talking for the majority again. 
How big are you as a rapper? Let I can't tell you that. Yeah? I can't tell you that. That's just that's just gonna make me. So, yeah, I can't tell you that. You would just you. I, would I should to, go the, find the people. Out. The people just have to do their research. But I'd say I'm very I'm very much a part of the staple of the UK. No, you are said to be. I read where you are yeah, said to be I one of the most that. significant. Yeah, I, I wouldn't in say the UK. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say it, but them would yeah. say it. I see what you mean. Yeah, in terms of even in terms of like the sound, the sonics, mm -hmm. I'm like one of the first UK UK rappers to rap on a dancehall rhythm. So in terms of bridging the gap between U UK rap music and dancehall, I played that part. So for example, like I grew up with Stylo G and all that, like Stylo been doing dancehall, but him I do dancehall and a DJ upon dancehall. Whereas my significant difference was I was rapping on dancehall. Oh. And that sound changed the UK music industry completely. Mm. You see me? So there's a lot of huge artists out there right now within the UK and all of them stem from growing up listening to me. And it sounds mad because I'm still young, but my start very right, young. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, my start young, my start young, young, young. Like my first time yeah. on the BBC and all of them things for going and freestyle and rap, I'm like 15, 16. Yeah. You understand? So, so you picked up where you left off since you went Well, back? kind of. When, when, when we met the announcement say I've returned, the whole country was happy. Everybody was like, it was, it obviously it went viral. Everybody was glad, everybody happy, this, that, that. Everything we put out, rare, rare, rare. everything's going great. And then I went Ghana, um, which essentially kind of was my first holiday. Because I remember, no, I can't fly Winfred. Remember, I couldn't fly before either. Yes. So now I can't fly, I book ticket and Ghana, Ghana, for go do some promotion and go work on some music over there. Return from Ghana, and then the whole world shut down. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you understand? So I'm still yeah. not really good for yeah. really start putting in the work yet. Mm -hmm. That time, they're really not, not really apparent yet. But I realize in life, you see, if you're working, for, you, you, you wait for the perfect moment, it now go forward, you have to just create it. So that's why even this trip to Jamaica right now, me not really ready, me never really ready for sure Jamaica, who I am yes. yet. But there's no time like now. So right now, me, I make Jamaica know who I am on stage. Are there more of you in the UK? Don't make me sound like that. More Jamaican. <laughs> no, I, I just want to know because there are so many uh, artists who are Jamaican link. Yeah. But they're not doing necessarily doing our music. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Keep yeah, no, nah, there's loads, so. man. There's a whole scene there. There's a whole scene. Yeah. So you're just, you're just like, like, for it, like I mentioned, Stylo. Yeah. Jamaica just are getting tuned Stylo. Stylo's been putting in work for years. Mm -hmm. Long, 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 long time Stylo had the music. Jamaica just are seeing him now. And again, it's because he's for reach here and show Jamaica, this is who I am. So you're yeah. just seeing that now. So after this, people obviously are hear the story. But after this, I'm going to put my focus upon Jamaica. Jamaica going to hear what's happening. So, all right. So describe the, the youth culture in the UK for me. The street culture. Street culture in the UK. Um, mm -hmm. Same street culture everywhere in the world. You have people who grew up in, a, you know, like unprivileged situations. And then they must end up provide for themselves and their family through doing certain things. And just... When you live in a jungle, in order to survive, you have to do things for survive. So that's really the street culture in London. But it's mixed, if yes. you're talking about the street culture. I, should, I really should have said the music culture. Oh, that's different. Well, not really. Not really. The music culture in the UK and the street culture is kind of like they're bleeding into each other now. Mm -hmm. because, because of the internet, a lot, a lot of artists who essentially live in their streets still right now might just put something on Instagram and all of a sudden, they're my big artists. So they never get the time to make the transition from the, okay. the artist yeah. who was in the street. It's happening everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's happening everywhere. You understand? So that's really it. Mm -hmm. That's really it. Where is Jamaica in all of this? Everywhere. Everywhere in More it. I Jamaica know this, please. Yes. Jamaica know it already, but I feel like over the years, maybe we are get diluted by too much different outsiders. Yes. We are still the most influential in our world. If you're anywhere you go in England, you're going to see something for doing Jamaica. Mm -hmm. You understand? And the reason why is because 
we are Jamaica. If we start changing it too much, we're not going to be the same. You understand? Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to maintain as authentic as possible. Jamaica is influential everywhere in the UK, from any, any aspect you want to look on it from. And we go over this and build over this, so they know that. All right, so we have a project for you. Yeah. The Return of the Immigrant. Yeah. <laughs> this is a project that you've done since you, you returned to the nah, UK. No, I've been working on Return of the Immigrant since for the world five years while I was out here. Okay. So there's songs on the project where I write from the perspective okay. of not knowing when I go back to England. In fact, one, the latest single from Return of the Immigrant is a song named Return of the Man, which is a song I write in a Ochi, Bread Not Hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I write it before me even know so I did a go back to England. So I kind of write that into existence. You understand? So that's the latest one. Return of the Man is produced by a producer. So the Jamaican Game soil Boy. influences all over this album? Everywhere. The inspiration of everywhere. All. It's who I even am COVID, it, from Every, a Jamaican perspective, everywhere. is, is in, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Of okay. Course, of course. So, so can we take the single now then? Yes. Let's take the single from here. It's the return. Ah, there you have it. The return of the man. After being on the island, I'm in business. <laughs> yeah, that's how I'm doing that little intro. <laughs> uh, wow, nice, nice track. Yeah, yeah, thank you, bro. Yeah, appreciate man. It, nice, it. nice track, Reggie. Appreciate it. How are they responding to this? Yeah, them love it. They love it. They love it. They love it. Even this, this song now, in terms of even the structure of the song, right? Yes. It, have a, it, have a, it, it almost have a mix of hip hop, Afro beats and dancehall, yeah. kind of all in other one. Even in that, some of the, the way I pronounce the words, yes. it's, more, it's more how people from Nigeria or Ghana or just Africa ah. in general will, will pronounce them words. But the reason why I do that is because that's what they're doing with us. Yes. You see what I'm trying to show yes. you? Like right now, if you listen to Afro beats, it's, it's obviously the whole way I want people anyway. And that's, uh -huh. that's really why it's yes. happening. So it's not really like a separation, but the, the lingo and even the way they pronounce certain words, mm -hmm. it's just like dancer like Jamaican people would. So I'm just flip it and say, all right, then cool. I'm going to tap into Africa. I'm going to use phone, oh, no, say phone words. And it's all right. Now in Nigeria and Ghana, you understand? Know that? that one I play. And it's a, it's a remake of that Return monster. Of, yeah, Return, Return of the, the Mac, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's finding favor. Yeah. Because you've refreshed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. With all these flavors. Of course, of course. Yeah, that, I, mean. I forget the credit to the producer. That's produced by a producer called Dini Boy, mm -hmm. who is of Jamaican heritage too, but him living in England. Winfred, may I bring through the whole squad, make him meet them? Same. Yeah, there's a lot of us. And that's really, so like you either say, like, are there more of me in yes. England? There's a, lot, there's, there's a lot of me over there. Like, I, I, so, and you're not aiming to change Jamaica, are you? No. I'm not aiming to change Jamaica. What I may, what may really want to do is to broaden the horizon in terms of what Jamaica sees. Because like you said, it's, it's, it's predominantly US mm -hmm. in terms of the influence. Things are happening. The UK rap scene is, is still young. That's what I'm going to say. Like, in terms of, and that's why they're more North American than they do the UK rap scene. Yes. That's what I'm saying. In terms of the timeline, me, they're kind of near the beginning. <laughs> okay. You understand? That's what you mean. Yeah. So there's loads of different artists that are, that are out now, but we're not, even, we're not even 20 years in yet in terms of UK rap music, like success, on a successful path. So what's happening right now in UK rap, we haven't had a 20-year run, but we've had different players over the years who are helped for Billy. You understand? Jamaicans were for a while concerned about the incursion yeah. of Afrobeat, the yeah. explosion of yeah. Afrobeat in like the UK and, and mm -hmm. other markets where reggae used to be yeah. a, a dominant force. Mm -hmm. Should we have been concerned about Afrobeat? No, I don't, think we, I don't think we should have been concerned about Afrobeats. I think we should have been concerned about dance art. Yes. That's really what we should we just should have just focused just on. Just focus on our thing. Yeah, because really and truly what's happening with the Afrobeat song them is the productions don't sound as rushed. Them sound like them take more time with actually putting the song together. The songwriting, the melodies, the structure of the songs in general plays a big part. Whereas you know Jamaica, 
We are right yeah. now. We are, we, are, we are put out 10 songs this week. Mm -hmm. And if we don't put out 10 songs this week, there's a next artist we're going to put out 10 songs this week and then everybody going to forget we. But I think it's more the focus needs to be on the quality over the quantity because I feel like that's what was happening back in the 90s. And that's why is the 90s is coined like the golden era. Ah. You get me? Like the production and just yeah, the, 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 the relationship between the artist and the producer before was more... Solid, mm -hmm. I believe, and I think that plays a major part. But Jamaica, I for also, where Afrobeat is concerned, I for also remember the difference in terms of the population in Africa. Oh, yeah, the, the population that, base, yes. That plays a big Massive, part. Massive, yes. So just the fact that dance hall even do what we do, because trust me, we go Ghana, and I promise you, Winfred, you just swear a Jamaica you did. Same. You just swear a Jamaica you did. Yeah. The music, the That's influence. where most of us came from. Exactly, you understand? <laughs> so really and truly, for what we do as an island, we are for proud of it. You get me? But we can't make it slip through and yes. we can't make it slip through and, and it's possible. We just have to we need to collaborate more as well. That's why I'm saying this is this is a part of what I'm trying to do. We need to collaborate and find different sides. It's like once you become successful as a dance hall artist, immediately the big feature them with it, the, the American label gonna make you get is obviously an American artist. But yeah. there's a whole like the UK scene is not a joke. Is that is that it is no, that, we, trust me. Yeah, I think we need to know that more. Yeah, yeah. So that's the role I'm Because here to that's play. the gateway for our international status that we now enjoy. Yeah, exactly. It was through the UK. Exactly. And UK continues to be a, a melting pot. Exactly. Where music is concerned. Exactly. Okay, and they are sending on music. From all, even the Americans sometimes mm -hmm. go through the UK and come back to the US. This is what I'm trying to show you. This is what Jamaica yeah. need to understand, yeah. that the yeah. UK, you impress the UK, you're impressing the world. They don't even need to impress the UK. They just need to collaborate with the UK. Yes. You understand? Because it's almost like you've been trying to do that yeah. in, in regards to trying to impress or trying to collaborate with the Americans. And I'm not saying to stop that. No, I, I, I was talking to, though, you know, yeah. Cash, about the consumer base, the, the, yeah, the, yeah, the fans, yeah, yeah, not, yeah, not, yeah. The, not the creators. Yeah, no, in, even in terms of that, even yes. in terms of the consumers, they're yes. more focused on the US scene. Yes. But that's because there's not more, there, there isn't more collaborations happening with the, 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 the creators from the, remember, the yes. consumers can only listen to what the creators make, mm -hmm. right? So if there's more collaborations happening between the dancehall artists, and the UK artists, the, the Jamaican consumers are going to look over that direction. Ah. And when they look, they're going to see there is so much things to relate to. Mm -hmm. Look, think about it. We love clocks. Mm -hmm. Wish clocks. You understand? It's not America. There's so much yes. to do with England that you would hear, even, if, even in terms of the way we talk, Winfred. Mm -hmm. The way we talk in England from, from, from the trenches to the, to the office them on the top floor, there's gonna be Jamaican lingo running from Dessa to Dessa. Yeah. You understand? Like, so, it's not like the perception of what, oh, Great Britain, da, da, da. it's not that. Mm -hmm. It's not that. And when them focus upon where we're actually are doing, we help bridge the gap, which is what I'm here to do, Jamaican consumers are gonna realize we have more in common with England than we do even with America. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so talk about your family now. Yeah. For us. Where are they now? Which ones, man? But big family. <laughs> the ones in the a UK, in they, they immediate, right? no. they immediate, fam. Yeah, yeah. Now, everybody, everybody, mother, father. My mother born um, Park Lane, mm -hmm. Redis Road. And, My and father born 100, mm -hmm. Redis Road. And They're understand? still there or in the UK? Nah, so my mom, my mom's on the island at the moment. Mm -hmm. Father's still up on the island, but two of them float whenever they want to float, them go where they want to go. Oh, cool. But predominantly, my family are from Park Lane. Park Lane. My yeah. family in 100 Lane, too. And just Redhills Road in general, you see me? Yeah, so big up Redhills Road. And then my family, obviously, in England. I grew up in an area called Peckham. Mm -hmm. So South London, we ask about Peckham, then we tell you in terms of just the, 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 the influence. Peckham in general has had even on a lot of different things. Yeah. Well, Cash, boy, we're happy to have you on our stage and um, we're happy about your, your success. I appreciate it. <laughs> All your successes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> including returning back yeah, yeah, to the UK yeah. and so on, winning yeah. kids and, and things. We, we love it. And we hope, though, that some of what you're seeing and, and um, you can communicate more to us. You can help some of the youths in Jamaica to of think course. like that, 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 that 
that bigger look at the music space and definitely the, and the and that what we consider to be threats aren't really threats like Afrobeat. Yeah, to understand yeah, yeah. continent. Hundred percent. People like you in the UK can help us to do that. Hundred percent. Help us to better even connect. Beyond, even beyond music, just mm -hmm. the youths that are just out there. Yeah. Just for understand that actually, a yes or everything there. Yes. Everyone's flying to be here, so really you're surrounded by a goal and you're not even realized. Ah. Yeah, look on the zinc fence and I see zinc. Yeah. But somebody over there said, so I got to pay a ticket and I want to reach which part of the zinc fence there because them now see zinc, them see culture. So you have to look on which part you're there and pick out the goal out of the gold mine because Jamaica is the gold mine, you understand? So as I said, I'm going to make sure I return to the stage because you're going to see the story. Why, why am I glad with this, Rinford? We used to watch this show during mm -hmm. them five years. Yes. And there's plenty of time people said to me, oh, go do on stage, go do on stage. I mean, I said, no, I don't want to do it yet because if I do on stage at that point, the story would, would have ended as, so now you've been deported and you're in a Jamaica. What's mm -hmm. next? Mm -hmm. Now we're gone past the chapter there. You understand? And I can speak from a different perspective because I now live on the two sides there. Mm -hmm. You understand? So now I go to England, I can see how things run over there. So, and I can see what in terms of knowledge and, and information that the youths over here are lacking. Because I promise you, mm -hmm. all, all them have, in any foreign countries, is just the opportunities. But none of them people, none of them places are doing nice like Jamaica. Not one of them, you mm -hmm. understand? So we just want to help create opportunities so that the youths and just people in general can see the world. Whether that's vicariously through my music, my mm -hmm. writing, or just me helping somebody else to show what their story is. Ah, yeah. yes, so we sir. shall return to the stage. Oh, yeah. Okay, anytime, my friend. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah, of and, course. And keep up the good work, Thank work you. Virgin. And, and it's great to meet you. Likewise. And we're inspired by your, your music, by your progress, by your winning ways. Thank you. Thank you. you. I mean? Return of the immigrant. And uh, yeah. yeah. So I'm sure a lot of people would, would want to get in touch with you. Yeah. How? Um, well, you can shout me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. My Instagram handle is at the name is cash. Yes. And my music, just in terms of my name, cash is spelled with C A S H H. So don't forget the double H. Double H. And that set me apart from every other cash. The other cash, they're my counterfeit. The return of the immigrant. Yeah. It's okay. Some, some old time we get back something from, Tell them. from them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, all right. So there you have it in the segment of our show. The man cash. Oh, 100% yardy. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless of where you are live. Thanks for watching our video. Please click subscribe and be on our stage anywhere, anytime. Always.